So we have this hexane, C6H14, blah, blah, blah. Determine the balanced reaction equation. Well, first of all, get the 100% theoretical error. So I'll just write it down. We had C6H14 plus 19 over 2 times O2 plus 3.76 N2 goes to 6 CO2s plus 7 H2Os plus 19 divided by 2, 3.76 N2s. Now, I need to get a balanced reaction equation with this information given. I have to rethink this. I'm still going to be going with a carbon balance, a hydrogen balance, an oxygen balance, and a nitrogen balance. That's how I'm going to get it. But what I'll do is I'll start off with my fuel, C6H14, and I'll leave this one alone for a while, but I know that the proportion of nitrogen and oxygen is fixed. Ah, come on now. So I'll leave that in parentheses for my dry air. And I'll come over here and I'll say what they're giving me, though, is 0 0.1071 CO2. 0 0.053602s and 0 0.8393N2s all, just like there's a parenthesis here to give me the right proportion of oxygen and nitrogen, there's a parenthesis here to give me the right proportion of CO2, O2, and N2 as determined by my dry molar analysis of the products. True? So, I'm going to look for a coefficient A. I'm going to look for a coefficient A, which will mo mo multiply all of that inside the parenthesis. Let's apply a carbon balance. How many carbons are on the left-hand side of this equation? Six, and it's only in the fuel. How many need to be... On the right-hand side, 6, I have an equal sign, okay? So 6 is equal to, and I look and I say, A times 0 0.1071 times 1. Is there any place, any other place where there's a carbon over on the right-hand side? No, there isn't. Can I solve for the coefficient A just from the carbon balance? Yes, we do, and we find that that coefficient A is 56.022. Yeah, keep all those digits. It's good to keep them all. So what we find is that this is 56.022. That's A. A goes right there. Okay. The water condensed out before we did the dry molar analysis. So I still need water in the products in the general case. So here, I'm going to leave a coefficient B. I'm now going to solve for that coefficient B. What type of balance do you think we're going to do? Hydrogen balance. How many are on the left-hand side? 14. I look. Are any in the CO2? None. O2? None. N2? None. So it's just going to be B times 2. Can you solve for B? Is it 7? Is B7? So then we come up here and we just replace and say, okay, there's 7. And yep, that's what B went to. B is 7. Okay. <coughs> Let's do the next balance. Which one? Oxygen balance. And so I don't know C, lowercase c, okay? Not C like carbon, uppercase c, but just a letter C. That's unknown. I need to solve for C. Okay, so on the it's uh, left-hand side, it's 2C is equal to. Then you're going to have 56.022 times, and put a big parenthesis right here, 0 0.1071 times 2 plus 0 0.0536 times 2. Close parenthesis, plus 7 times 1. We can solve for C. 
12.5. So now we come up here and we put in 12.5. What is 12.5 as a ratio? Something over 2. What is it? 25 over 2, is that correct? Yeah. So I like to work with 25 over 2 because I had 19 over 2 for the 100% theoretical error. Can I box this? and call this the answer to part A, which is now my balanced reaction equation. Okay? Now, what about part B? It says percent theoretical error. We already determined that we expected excess error. What is its percent theoretical error for this problem? Well, you're bringing in 25 over 2. And what's needed to be 100% theoretical is 19 over 2. It's 25 over 19, 1.32. Uh, I know there's some extra change there, but I would say it's the answer here, the theoretical error. I don't have a symbol for that that the textbook uses, okay? It would be 132%. Hundred and thirty two percent theoretical error. Do we see how we did that? You compared with how much air really was used to the theoretical air. Okay. So we have about thirty two percent excess. That's what we have, thirty two percent excess air. Part C. What is the air to fuel ratio on a mass basis? Well, this was our air to fuel. Do I put a bar on that or not? No. no bar. It's on a mass basis. So I need to calculate the mass of the air per the mass of the fuel. Is that correct? Air to fuel? Which is the number of moles, get rid of this, number of moles of air times the molar mass of dry air divided by the number of moles of fuel times the molar mass of the fuel. True? Yes. Okay. Number of moles of air. What is it? 12.5 times 28.97 times the molar mass. Is there something else missing? Well, I needed 12.5 oxygen. I did get 12.5 oxygen. But to get the 12.5 oxygen, how many did I have to bring in of the dry air? 4.76. To get the one kilomole of the oxygen, I had to tag along 3.76 kilomoles of nitrogen. Hence, I ingested a total of 4.76 kilomoles of air. All right. I know that's challenging. You have to wrestle with it, okay? All right, and then we bring in one kilomole of fuel. Leave this coefficient one in front of the fuel. Don't toy with it. You will be tempted. How many people have solved the homework problem already? Were you tempted to change it? Don't. Don't. Leave it one. And then we just have to get the molar mass of the fuel. I picked this problem so that in the table A25 as well as the table A1 in this textbook, there is no hexane. It's not available in your appendices. Hexane. So what do you do? Estimate it. Yeah, yeah. So each one of these C's is worth 12. Each one of the H's is worth 1. So 12 times, to get the molar mass estimated, you have 6 carbons and 14 Hydrogens, 72 plus 14, 86. 86 kilograms per kilomole. The molar mass of just one carbon by itself, 12 kilograms per kilomole. Hydrogen, just by itself, one kilogram per kilomole. That's how you get a very good estimate. Now, somebody goes out and says, I have access to the internet and I look up and it's 86.18. So you got it to four digits. Well, since we have it to 40 digits, let's put it in there 86.18. So the air to fuel ratio 
when you compute it, comes in at 20.0. 20.0. What does that mean? That means I bring in 20 kilograms of air for every kilogram of fuel for this combustion process. 20 to 1 on a mass basis. 20 pounds of air per pound of fuel. 20 grams of air per gram of fuel. All right. How about this is the answer for part C, right? This was the answer for part B. What is the mole fraction of the water in the products? I'm going to tuck that up here, running out of space, okay? So what is the mole fraction of water in the products? Well, isn't that the symbol Y of V or Y of H2O? It's the mole fraction. Isn't that how many moles of vapor there are or water? In, if I look at this equation, there's seven. There's seven moles of water. And then I have this 56.022 times 0.1071 moles of CO2 plus 0.0536 moles of oxygen plus 0.8392 moles of nitrogen plus the seven moles of the water vapor. That's the total number of moles of the products. True? If you want, you can bang this out a little bit and you find that the number of moles for the carbon dioxide is six. The number of moles of the oxygen is three. The number of moles of nitrogen is 47. So I calculate the mole fraction of water vapor to be 11.1%. I know there's some more digits on that one, 11.111 or something. But that's close enough. Three significant digits for the answer on D. So what is the dew point temperature? Well, I would get the partial pressure of the vapor in that mixture going out. The mole fraction of vapor in that mixture times the total pressure of the mixture. At this point, you reread the problem statement. And you observe they didn't tell you the total pressure. Assume atmospheric. You, sometimes it's just say, I'm going to assume it's atmospheric pressure. There's no other information given. So you assume 101.3 kilopascal, and you calculate that this partial pressure of the water vapor is right at 11.26 kilopascal. I go into the steam tables. I find where the temperature, the saturation temperature, gives me that saturation pressure of 11.26 kilopascal, and that temperature is 48.0 degrees C. That is the dew point temperature. 